All right, folks. Project Minotaur, 180mm tank concept. Looks more like a 20 pounder on a Centurion Mark III or so, but it is a precursor to the FV215 or 4005 with the 183mm hash round, but cannot find this vehicle on tank encyclopedia. So they did mention a Lily White project, but hey, thank you guys for the link to armor archives on this vehicle. So not to be confused with the Minotauro, Wargaming calls it the Crusher. <laughs> it is not a pretty vehicle. I mean, it is 230mm at the hull front and turret front. So that is still pretty thick for a tier 8. It is slow, but DPM is also up there. So slow, heavy, lots of DPM. Cupola is also protected by a bunch of periscope in the front, so little nubbins protecting the cupola in the back. So we'll have to see the actual armor, but yeah, sloped 230 with roundedness to it. That is pretty good when you think about it. <laughs> it's not a pretty vehicle. <laughs> Horsepower per turn ratio is about 11. Top speed is about 24. This thing is slow, so get used to it, but hell, it's still faster to rev than something of a VK168 or even the Mammut, the VK100, so good enough, better than the Mauer Breaker, it breaks Mauers. <laughs> cupola in the back, but then again this vehicle is pretty tall, so shooting at the cupola is still at an angle and protected by the periscope in the front. So we'll have to see the actual armor, but British heavy tanks are pretty thick, and that's an angle and a half, holy crap. <laughs> Exposing only the drive wheels. So improve hardening is a must, restore all the health to the tracks if they get blown off, but you're not exposing the side armor or side of the support for the drive wheel with your hull. That's nothing, right? So. This is crazy. It's one of the more interesting, to say the least, vehicle designs. Like a double track system or quad track system, in a sense, but it is still slow. <laughs> ass end looks like a enlarged Matilda esque of an ass, but alright, it is British, so. Big lumbering beast. How does it compete with something of a Action X Carnarvon? That is a big question. It is certainly better armored than an Action X Carnarvon, but it's a lot slower. It will certainly be better than a Caliban or Gonzalo, I think. But then again, Gonzalo is better than the Caliban, even though technically vehicle model is about the same. So, I mean, we are due for a tier A British heavy tank. Again, I guess. <laughs> it's fine. God damn, this thing is ugly. <laughs> It is very reminiscent of earlier British tank design for the ass end, especially the large drive wheels. Holy crap. So likely space armor covering the tracks as well, but we'll have to see the Crusher. It's a 108mm with 230mm of pin for AP round. Shell velocity is alright. Gold shell is APCR with 260, so kinda underperforms compared to usually 270, 280 or so. The high end is about 300 mm on the Luva or T-34 for that matter, but 330 alpha, good enough for that DPM. Reloads very quick at about 7.4 seconds with a 100% crew. High explosive is high explosive, but then again, a little bit more alpha than usually 390 or so. Aim time is relatively quick. Accuracy is good enough. 10 degrees of gun depression, 20 elevation, 50 rounds, fits all the Carnarvons and Conquerors out there with the four-man crew. 24 kilometers per hour top speed, 12 reverse. Still faster than a Mauer Breaker, right? And 11.1 .1 horsepower per time ratio, so still faster than the super heavies of German designs, but hull traverse 30, tur traverse 35. Actually surprisingly quick for a fat medium tank-esque of a turret traverse, but 1500 health, 
about the average for a large vehicle at tier 8. 230 at the hull front, 230 at the turret front, 100 at the hull sides, but then again, where the hell does the hull side start? Like right here? Or right here? Who the hell knows? We'll have to see the actual armor profile, but 80 at the turret sides. Actually, I reversed that. <laughs> 80 at the hull sides, there we go. The turret side is 100. Switch that around, but still, where the hell does the 80 start? Like right here? Possibly. And 390 for view range, that's average. Radio is standard. So, point the front always towards enemies. Doesn't care about tracks being blown off, so that's nice, but if it's like lower place, also 230, then that's pretty good, right? You have to shoot the cupola. So it's like a mini object 279 early, in a sense, where the tracks doesn't matter, and the whole armor is super thick. You have to shoot the cupola in order to pin, but it's a versatile, it's not assault, it's slow. <laughs> Super big vehicle with no camo, almost no camo, but 72 tons. Don't ram this thing, otherwise you're stupid. So DPM is pretty decent, 2650. Yeah, accuracy is alright. If you're fighting in close range, that doesn't matter much. Aim times also are alright-ish. 2.1 is all good enough. 10 degrees gun depression makes work of it. Also, this vehicle is tall, so theoretically, you can shoot downwards into the hull's roof of enemy vehicles, overmatching sometimes with like only 20 ish millimeter, 30 ish millimeter ish. But yeah, health seems decent enough, but beefy enough. Frontal armor seems very beefy, don't side scrape much, but just point the front towards enemies. View range, radio is slightly different than what's on paper, but then again, <laughs> slight discrepancies, not that much. Uh, they don't show if it's a premium, but it should be a premium vehicle. They only show the crew right here. Alright, 50 rounds, shell velocity is decent enough, workable. Gold shell might struggle against some heavier targets like the mouse or even the tier 9, so like the VK4502 P OSB. In a sense, but shoot the weak spots mostly. It's a premium tank. I mean, does it compete with the Carnarvon Action X? DPM is close. DPM is definitely close to the Action X Carnarvon, but speed is not there. <laughs> huh? Versatile heavy tank crusher. Sure, I guess. Looks like a Sphinx with the arms in the front for the wheels. Nothing seems too crazy, right? But the armor is obviously the strong point, along with the DPM. The speed and camo is obviously the downside, but if there are all corridor maps or city maps, then hey, who the hell cares about freaking camo <laughs> or speed? So just don't get flanked, but it's not that pretty. <laughs> So, versatile heavy tank, similar to the Carnarvon, or Action X Carnarvon as well, but this thing has a lot of DPM. Actually, it doesn't have a rammer on, so that might be negated by the rammer, but with the rammer and the crew, the 32 pounder does perform better than the 20 pounder on the Action X Carnarvon. Obviously, the DPM is a lot better than something of a Gonzalo or the Caliban. These two sucks ass. I, I hate these two. <laughs> Somehow, this thing is faster with more engine power. Even though it's practically the same vehicle with a smaller gun, but... God damn, I hate these two. The stupid twins. <laughs> this thing has a lot of DPM. Holy crap. 2,648. Let's compare with the actual tanks.gg stats. Carnarvon is one of the best heavy tanks, non-premium. Action X Carnarvon is also pretty good, but yeah, baseline DPM is same almost to the actual Carnarvon. So definitely better than Action X Carnarvon's DPM by 200 or so, 250. This thing has a lot of DPM. Put a rammer on this thing. About the same DPM as a Carnarvon, which is crazy, but yeah, definitely slower than the Carnarvon. 
armor is debatable. We have to see the actual armor, but view range is slightly less. Same ammo count. It is a 108 compared to a 32 pounder, which is a 94 millimeter. Overmatch some armor, like with the STRV S1. But, hmm. Ooh, this thing has the DPM. Doesn't have the mobility, but 55 pounder gun. It's a 55 pounder. They don't show you the caliber? It should be a 108. Should be. Huh. At least that's what's said on Discord or so, but we'll find out later, I guess. Yeah, we'll find out later. They don't show you the dispersion or track moving dispersion without the mods on Super Test, of course, but yeah, you obviously want improved hardening for the first slot. This will help out with tracks being blown off, like with super heavy tanks. So if you're not side scraping, yeah, you don't need improved hardening, but the tracks are very prominent on this vehicle. So improved hardening will fully restore suspension hit points after repairs, which is basically restore all the health, then damage health. So this is kind of imperative for exposing the front end of your vehicle all the time, getting your tracks blown off. So improved hardening is definitely a must. Rammer is an obvious must. Increase DPM to almost like 3150 or so. Or 3,100, so yeah, definitely rammer. And finally, turbocharger <laughs> to make it go faster. Better top speed is very important, but I might be crazy and put a turbocharger on this vehicle. Yeah, that might not be a bad idea. Aim time's all right. Accuracy is all right. Vertical stabilizing when you're slow doesn't matter much, right? Maybe a turbocharger. You could put vertical stabilizer if you want, but I would say turbocharger to buff up the top speed. Yeah, top this off. 24 is pretty slow. <laughs> Alright, fuel mods doesn't matter at tier 8, but let's take a look. So first one is more track health or better terrain resistance. If you already have improved hardening, you already have the track health nail down so give it better terrain resistance give it better speed basically accuracy or aim time give it better accuracy 2.1 seconds of aim time is already good enough buff it uh, buff it to like 0 0.33 accuracy with about 2.2 seconds of aim time yeah give it better accuracy and finally view range or stun duration now granted this vehicle is slow but you have to really take cover <laughs> or expect the artillery shell 1 or 2 so I will still pick all time favorite which is the view range then situational stun duration thing so view range is more important it's ubiquitous on all the maps whereas stun duration is more situational right if you're behind cover you're not getting shot at by artillery but just don't go into artillery fire zones oh god how the hell do I rate this thing Jesus Christ <laughs> If this thing was faster, and the armor really holds up on the upper plate and the lower plate, then it'll be like a 7 for a premium tank, right? The cupola is all the way in the back and protected by the nubbins, the little nipples in the front of periscopes, so theoretically they're harder to pin, but we really have to see the armor profile. There should be side skirts covering the tracks as well, so even though it says 80 at the hull, sides theoretically should be a little bit thicker right but yeah the cupola is small protected by the little nubbins of periscopes so we'll have to see but dpm is scary canarvin has one of the best dpm of a tier a heavy tank without premium st status right this thing has about the same premium dpm except it's a premium tank <laughs> One of the best DPM, and it's a premium tank. Downside to it is gold shell kind of sucks, but... How the hell do you kill this thing if you're playing a slow tier 6? Like a T-150. You're not killing this thing in a T-150. Not even. Your gold shell doesn't matter to this thing. And it's just DPMs you in the face. <laughs> so, yeah. It sucks to play like a slow tier 6, but... 
I'm struggling to think which vehicles are going to have a hard time if they're not fast enough. Like a... 65? VK 36? 65 is at tier 5. VK 36, the pre-Tiger, in a sense, right? Kinda slow-ish, without armor. Yeah, this thing will chew it up in a matter of seconds. For now, if I'm presuming all the armor is good on the upper plate, on the lower plate, on the cupola as well. 6.5 or so. If this was faster, right? If this was faster with better top speed, I would say 7. With better gold shell too. If this thing has like 300mm pen gold shell, that would be a 7, right? This thing doesn't care about your armor if it has a better gold shell, so. And it can also hold down. So 6.5 for now, but then again, I play a lot of super heavies. I'm used to it, so haul down is nothing special, but if you have a lot of armor, then you don't even need to haul down. And super slow vehicles doesn't really matter that much if all the maps are quarter maps or city maps, right? So super heavy tanks, I enjoy them like Japanese heavy tanks originally. These are super heavies with improved hardening. And even buffing with toolbox. <laughs> Technically, that's a toolbox originally, but these are slow, but they can take a hit. Imagine if this thing has like 3000 DPM with a rapid firing gun. Scary, right? So, uh, I would say 6.5 out of 10. I'm a heavy tank enjoyer, so I play my heavy tanks. I enjoy playing slow and. They're freaking annoying to deal with if they have a lot of armor and even DPM, so... 6.5 out of 10. Well, there you go, folks. The Crusher. Technically, Project Minotaur, but confusing with Minotauro, so Wargaming made up a word. Next will be Colonoscopy, because British tanks starts with C. <laughs> but, god damn, it's an ugly looking vehicle. Stats are decent, other than the speed, but god damn. <laughs> Well, as always, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.